Real quick video here, folks, to kind of drive home what you need to know about growing a Zola and its shade requirements in heavy sun, especially summer weather. Uh, and this would be most of the country, honestly. Uh, obviously, Texas, we get a lot of really heavy sun in our summer. And I want to show you, first, I'm going to show you some Azola in this pond, but in the same system, some very unhappy Azola, exact same water, same nutrient load, because the system I'm showing you right now originates in that tank. It goes up to three tanks over there, overflows to this tank, and this tank through that overflow apparatus overflows to that tank. So it's what you're looking all the same. There's no difference in the water. The only difference is the solar exposure. So if you look at this, and I took about a half of a five gallon bucket out of here twice this week, and it's already starting to grow back. I have to keep taking it out so there's a hole to feed the fish in here through. But this is very healthy Azola. This is what you want your Azola to look like. And before I took any out this morning, it had already closed the mat up, and it was a good inch thick of this stuff, which is about as thick as it'll get. So this is absolutely fantastic location on my property for Azola. If I wanted to grow a bunch more, I could put in more tanks in this system. I could do it with still tanks. I could do it with kiddie pools. I could do it uh, tr uh, the trays that I put the water in for the ducks. And like over here in this shaded area would be a perfect place for it. I'm not going to do that because I'd have to build a fence because the ducks eat it all. That's why I took out a half a five gallon bucket just this morning to feed the ducks. So this is what you want to see. Okay. And a lot of people say, well, it can be green, it can be red. If it starts to turn red, it doesn't mean it's going to die, but it probably is, and it's unhappy. Let's go take a look over here. So again, what you're about to see, exact same tank. Now, I didn't remove this. It's literally died back off this side of this tank. And if you look here, it's just nowhere near as healthy. I mean, this stuff will come right around if we relocate it, and we might. See how small it is here? It's unhappy. It's just not doing well. But see how it started to actually die? And it'll literally eventually turn black. Now, why does this tank look like this? Well, it looks like this because this tank gets the most sun out of these three tanks. This is the exact opposite problem. It's doing okay over here. It's getting just enough sun, but see how small form the leaf is? So this is not getting enough hours of sun, but it's keeping it from dying. So it's got a little reserve here hiding in amongst this uh, menta aquatica, which is the Latin way of saying aquatic mint this is a great mint by the way it, i would say it's about twice as strong as your typical peppermint and flavor for making teas it's almost but not quite too strong you use less of it anyway then you come over here you got a bunch of string algae let's feed some ducks because there'll probably be some shrimps and other water creatures snails going along for the ride here and this string algae the only way i know to control it. hey guys here is to uh mechanically control and it's just duck food it's also outstanding worm food in your worm bins by the way they love it it's high in protein and high in minerals and nutrients and the ducks really don't eat it so much as they go through it they find all the goodies in it like they're doing right there anyway you look here a lot of dieback right here complete death right here it's kind of healthy but it's already see it's starting to turn just a little color turn this also gets a lot of sun so these two tanks are about done producing any for me for this year. So the smartest thing I can do is harvest as much of it as I can and uh, give it to ducks. Now I'll throw it on the ground for these guys and they'll probably eat it, but they like it best. I put it in their water tanks because their water bursts. They like to eat in the water. Now I want to go over here. This is a different system, but I manage all my systems the same. And this is one getting a significant amount of sun, but it does at least get a break. And the reason I wanted to show you this is because it starts to show you what it's going to do when you really know it's on its way out the door for you. So I've been feeding this. That's why there's so little of it. It's not the little amount. is not really because of the sun. But you see how this red, rusty yellow orange color? This stuff is not happy. Two weeks ago, this was a thick mat like the first one I showed you. And what I was doing, since I have some koi and goldfish in this pond, is I just come over here and I just throw some out in the main pond. So it's like a self-feeding system to feed the fish that'll eat it. And uh, here's a cool thing here. It will grow on soil. That's, that's some that got up on there somehow, probably when I was throwing it. And it's happy, it's in soil, and it's probably getting some shade from that uh, Ipamira Aquatica there. 
and it's living. It's kind of cool that it will live on soil if the soil stays wet enough. That's kind of the happiest looking stuff in this pond right now. Anyway, I have a way to fix this and it's just a matter of getting some time. I have quite a bit of 30% shade cloth around because I bought a big piece for that aviary back there and it really was, it wasn't enough shade when I had the quail in there so I took it off and it's just sitting in a box. So I'm gonna start making some frames for some other places I have like this and just put 30% shade cloth over and I should be able to produce all through my summer and then instead of just producing the water hyacinth in the height of summer in many of my systems, I will be able, what is that? String algae. Um, I will be able to produce the azola all the way through as well. And this does well in our winter. It may not in everybody's winter. Now here's the thing about this stuff in, in, in the winter. I bought my first azola about seven years ago. I bought, it was like a, like a sandwich sized bag. It wasn't a sandwich bag, but it was about as much as you could cram, cram into a sandwich uh, zip top bag. I've never bought it ever again. I'm not exactly sure how it survives because we've had, you've seen it, like these things completely ice over. We had that event about three winters ago where it was below freezing for nine consecutive days and it was below 10 degrees with counting the high, stayed below 10 for counting the high for like seven days. Everybody called it the ice storm. There was hardly any ice storm at all. It was just cold. And all, and it, it and the duckweed came back. And what it seems happens is somehow the intrinsic intelligence that this plant knows when it freezes, that some of it sinks and it goes down where the water's not frozen, just like a fish does. And it just kind of goes into a stasis down there. And when the water warms up, it surfaces. However, you know, if it's dumping some gas or taking on some gas or something, I don't know. But it makes it through the harshest winters we've ever had. It's native up into the Carolinas in Virginia, at least. And it might be further north than that. I only know so much about this plant, but it's a, it's a survivor. I, I don't, I, a lot of you guys ask me, can I grow it in? And my answer is try it. It's not that much to get something to start with. And all you really got to do, if you want to keep some over winter and your climate won't do it, get a fish tank, throw, don't put fish in it. <laughs> I guess you could, but better off, don't, don't put any fish in it. Throw some nutrient in it, throw, throw a light over it, and, uh, you know, harvest it out and do something with it so it doesn't choke itself to death because it kind of can in a confined system. And keep some through your winter, and then as long as you have a couple handfuls to seed your systems with or to restart whatever grow media you have, I mean, that right there, every three days to four days, people say every two days like duckweed. Duckweed doesn't do it either. But every three to four days, that'll double. And uh, it definitely, three to four days, will double plant count. Each one's a little fern plant. This is a floating fern. Even if the, the babies have not yet reached size, it will double its plant count easily in, in three days-ish. Little snail hanging out here. Let's see if a catfish wants you. And... Uh, uh, why do we grow this? We grow because the ducks eat it. If you do black soldier flies, they love it. Worms love it. Uh, pretty much everything that we eat eats this, and everything we use to compost with eats this. It's also very high in nitrogen, so it is great as long as you're not putting it. That might be what happened. I might have done this. It might have been a video I did it in. Like if I'll use it as a mulch, and you're basically fertilizing, but it's so wet it might start growing there. We'll see. We'll keep an eye on that. And, uh, but if you just pile a bunch of it up, it'll self-compost in about a week and a half. And it makes a beautiful, con you don't have to add anything to it. I mean, you literally just take this stuff and pile it up and turn it a couple times while it's drying out. And when, it, when it's completely, you know, pretty much dried out, maybe keep it wet for a few days, spray it when you turn it, and uh, then let it, let it go. And it, it turns into like perfect compost with no other inputs. So it's kind of a miracle plant. I'm not gonna get into it, I need to close this video out, but if you look up uh, Azola Ice Age on YouTube, you'll hear a theory that's plausible about how Azola itself may have actually caused one of the ice ages that it used to grow, where today we call it the North Pole. <laughs> anyway guys, Azola Carolina, worth growing on your homestead.